broke out in the capital. Check it out. Treasurer Josh Frydenberg joins us now from Parliament House in Canberra. Nice to see you this morning, Treasurer. It's a pretty significant deployment no, nice to, you, to, to a very volatile situation. Mm. Well, there are very disturbing images in Honiara of looting and burning buildings and civil unrest, and that is why Australia has responded positively to the Solomon Islands government's request for assistance. And as Carl just said, a strong contingent of 100 plus Defence Force personnel, federal police, and uh, representatives of our diplomatic corps to help provide that necessary support so that things can be brought under control. I know there are some tactical units going in there um, as well, but will they be armed? Yes, the, uh, our Australian uh, Defence Force and, and Federal Police will be appropriately armed for any contingency. Uh, but we have been there before. We've supported the Solomon Islands. Uh, they're an important part of the Pacific family. And when they requested assistance, uh, Australia was very quick to respond. Well, I mean, the island has, has shifted its relationship towards China mm. um, of late. Is that something that concerns you? And what does it say that they actually called us mm. when they needed help to restore order? Well, it's important people understand we're not going there to intervene in domestic politics. That is a matter for that sovereign country. Uh, what we are doing is to help support their own law enforcement agencies get things under control. But there's no secret to the fact that China is trying to extend its influence globally and also in our region. Uh, but we have very strong, long-lasting, historic relationships with the uh, Pacific Island countries. We work very closely with them economically, um, strategically, and obviously there's the people-people links as well. OK, um, reports this morning of a Chinese spy ship travelling along our coastline. Um, obviously, it's not the ming -Wa with tourists on board, is it? Um, are you concerned about that? It was a Provocative? I mean, they didn't break any laws, but is it still provocative? Oh, well, no surprises here um, that uh, everyone wants to get the opportunity to get that little bit of extra information if they can. As the Prime Minister has said, uh, we knew they were there. Uh, we continue to do our business. We take the necessary precautions, but it also underlines um, the, the challenging strategic environment that Australia is in. And this is why we're heavily investing in our defence force. When we came to government, spending on defence was at its lowest proportion of a share of the economy since 1938. Since that time, we've poured billions of dollars into our defence force. At the same time, we've entered into strategic partnerships like AUKUS with the United States and the United Kingdom to value trusted partners who are going to share the most up-to-date technology with our defence forces and with our um, security personnel. These are what these are the steps that we need to take to ensure that Australia's national security is protected. Carl. It's, it's lucky we've got those nuclear subs in, what, 40 years' time? Ooh. Ooh. Well, we've got, as you know, it's we've Friday. got submarines. Ooh. Uh, we've got, we've got, uh, we've got the access to the best equipment across the, uh, across the board. But it's not just submarines, Ali. It's also cyber technology. Oh, she got you, Josh. Uh, it's also artificial <laughs> intelligence. <laughs> And, and advanced weapon systems. <laughs> well, yeah, advanced I'm having a dig, mate. Friday, having I'm a, a dig. Oh, about, I'm an easy target. Talk about I'm an easy target weaponry on systems. A Friday, eh? um, hey, Josh, uh, just quickly, I want to get you on, on two more things. Um, look, the, uh, several banks I yeah. uh, know are looking at lifting interest rates, um, fixed, uh, fixed rates um, mm. as well as variable. You can see the writing on the wall here. Um, and in the last 24 hours, I know of a couple who have done it already. How concerned are you about the banks mm. uh, leaping ahead of Reserve Bank? Well, the market is pricing in uh, interest rates rising in, in the foreseeable future. Now, the Reserve Bank, who is ultimately the arbiter of where the cash rate sits, has said they're not expecting to do that any time soon. But we have got interest rates at historically low levels. And today, if you've got a $500,000 mortgage, let's say a 30-year $500,000 mortgage, you're paying $600 less a month now in your interest bill than you were when we came to government. I think now, that, that's I a think big to change be fair, I think because interest just, rates have come down. That's changed. I think the number of them are on the way up now. Mm. Well, 
obviously the I would encourage the banks to, to follow the, the central bank yeah. in terms of pricing mm -hmm. uh, their, their interest rates and people have borrowed more as house prices have risen. Mm. Yeah, look, I think they're going up. I think it's going to cause dramas for a lot of people. But I quickly want to get you on jobs too. Uh, with New South Wales ditching, yeah. ditching basically all COVID restrictions, is that going to provide much of a boost? I think it will. I think this is another positive announcement from the New South Wales Government of restrictions being eased further. We've got, Ali, some data out today which shows that 350,000 jobs were created since September. And we've seen 1.2 million people across New South Wales, Victoria and the ACT come off those COVID disaster payments as those vaccination rates rates hit that 70 and 80 per cent. Now those people haven't gone on to welfare, those people have actually gone back to work because at the same time the number of people on income support has fallen. So it's another proof point that there's real momentum building in the Australian economic recovery. In fact the Australian economy is heating up leading into Christmas mm. and we're already starting to see some of those retail numbers being very positive. So I'm feeling very confident, your viewers should be feeling very confident and upbeat as we go into Christmas. Christmas, that some of the worst of COVID is behind us and we can look to next year with a lot of optimism. You should go into the weekend not feeling confident at all after Ali just towed you. <laughs> I think he's going to be okay somehow. <laughs> she, didn't say anything about, she didn't say anything about me opening water bottles or anything like that, so that's okay. Oh, we've got the water bottle. Yeah. The water bottle. What happened there, my friend? Anyway. Hey, uh, good to see you, Josh. Well, Thank you, you know, there, there is there is a legitimate There is a legitimate excuse oh, hey, there. Oh, easy with the finger. Splint on the finger. Treasure, so. you're right. Oh, you're right. That is <laughs> offensive. <laughs> that's too much, Josh Frydenberg. <laughs> Ali, you, you've got a thick skin there, Carl. I know, I know. <laughs> Not that thick. I feel very offended. I'll tell you what, everyone in Pal Car Canberra's got a thick skin after the week they've just had. I know. Thank you, Josh. <laughs> Thank you, Treasurer. I'm the first uh, television Thanks, host guys. to get given the finger by a Treasurer. Um, are you sure it's the first? Won't be the last. <laughs> no. Won't be the last. Hey, just